Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to the Whiskey Report. I am your host, Miles Kristen. On today's episode, I will be playing an interview and some music by Matthew Fisher, also known as Matty or sometimes even Fatty is his nickname. Matt Fisher is a guy I actually met about 20 years ago when I first moved to Door County. And we became good friends. We had a, uh, a friend who, who had one of those 1982 Toyota Supras that we would often uh, drive around with him in. And uh, we ended up all working at the same crappy restaurant uh, as dishwashers at, at different times. And, uh, you know, he was somebody that I would uh, hang out with a lot. I'd go over to his house and everybody in his family was a musician so there were so many times i'd go over to his house and everybody was playing guitar matt fisher maddie or also known as fatty he has actually moved off to bangkok thailand where he has a restaurant a bar called fatty's and he gives this interview uh now uh via skype uh while he's over there in in bangkok and uh, throughout the next couple hours, I'll be playing his music. And um, this is a guy, if you look up Matthew Fisher, you can find his, his music on all sorts of uh, various uh, avenues like uh, Bandcamp and YouTube and so forth. Uh, before we get started <clears throat> with the interview, I'll be playing a song by him. And before I uh, play the song, I will uh, just do a quick plug. Uh, of course, you are listening to... The Whiskey Report. I am your host, Miles Kristen, and this is on Corsair Radio, sponsored by Discourse Coffee Shop, a liquid space in Sister Bay, Wisconsin. And please take the time to help Corsair Radio get bigger. Uh, things like checking out the Facebook page, sharing the link, uh, sharing the link to the website, and so forth. And if you ever want to see any of the videos that go along with my interviews, you can check out the whiskey report with miles kristen on youtube and in a moment we will uh be playing our first song by matthew fisher and we'll be playing playing his music all throughout the inter- all throughout the uh, next two hours along with the interview thank you See you. I've been dying to hear 
nothing good. <laughs> uh, my name is Matthew Fisher. I'm from Door County, Wisconsin. And you are currently living where? Bangkok, Thailand. Live and are here. you? What is that? Is large portion of my life. <laughs> what's that beer you're drinking? That's a Leo. Yeah, uh, that's the, that's that's like the PBR of of Thailand. <laughs> oh my god. I don't even know where we can start. Um I, I was thinking about it the other day. It's crazy to think we have known each other for about twenty years now. Yeah, that's about right. Jesus, time flies. <laughs> I moved up to Door County in around the year late the, the later part of the the, the year two thousand. And uh Bush era. I mean, your nickname has always been Fatty, and I also, there was another guy whose nickname was Tubby, <laughs> and right. I hung out. I hung out with you guys and a guy that we'll we'll call Schwain, who you know this guy uh, literally put in subwoofers on his little boat just so he could play the notorious Big's Hypnotize. That was a glorious time. I remember getting stuck on uh, Chambers Island on that boat. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I remember getting stuck on... Uh, we got stuck once with him on his boat on uh, Horseshoe Island. And, of course, we had been uh, drinking beers and whatnot. And uh, I can't remember if we had the, the oh, Coast Guard or, like, somebody else. Oh, yeah, that's that. right. It was Horseshoe Island. That was you were with us, man. Yeah. And uh, I think I somebody, like... Put my leather jacket over my head because all the waves were crashing over and like totally <laughs> scary. Oh my god! Uh, being a teenager in Door County in the early two thousands was so much damn fun. Um, it really was. Okay, so you play music. Both of your brothers play yeah. music. I mean, I want to say it seems it always seemed to me like everybody in your family was a musician in one way or another. Yeah, pretty much somehow. Uh, except for my little sister, she played the flute for a while, but now she plays the mom. I remember one time I was at your house, and it was like. You and your brothers were all playing guitar, and then the dog came in, and the dog started singing to the music. Yeah, yeah, Doc. He would always sing along to the harmonica. There's like a there's a Pink Floyd video of a dog singing along to the harmonica. I guess some dog would just trip them out that way. I don't know if he enjoyed it or if it was like unbearable. He would sing along all the time. Okay, so you moved to Bangkok, and you have started a a. Well, describe what the business is. I mean, it's a bar, it's a restaurant, it's. Well, right now it's a fucking delivery service because we're not allowed to open. Uh, but yeah, it's a bar. It's a it's a, a dive bar. I, I gets referred to a lot with food, and uh, we've been around almost ten years now, man. And yeah, it's you know people like people like the food and stuff, and I'm lucky that we get to have an existence here, you know. That is that is so amazing. I mean, you, you moved out of Wisconsin, moved to a whole other country, and have your own establishment, <laughs> like. Uh, called Fatty's Bar and Diner. Got my name on the sign. <laughs> and 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 you and you also do music out of the spot, or at least you know before everything happened. Yeah, last we year. have. We, yeah, well, I've, I'll, I'll say it again, but you know when I started this place, I really the, the whole point was to have a place to get, uh, you know, good and cheap American food, and have shows you know and i wanted to put on bands that was a big part of it and have like you know local local music here uh so yeah that's been a huge part of it since the beginning and we've had some 
legendary shows, man. I had eight bars away of Clem Snide come and play here. And we were we were, we were just talking about uh, Camp David the other day, and I mean, most people, yeah. especially outside of Door County, they hear Camp David, they think, oh, that that retreat the presidents go to, and. Uh, right. So, how would you describe Camp David uh, to somebody not from Door County? Um, I don't know, man. It's tough. I kind of grew up there, really. Uh, Hippie commune, kind of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, uh, I'll a lot of fun. I'll never forget how I came across it. I mean, just like going up there or moving up there, and then I, I hear about like, oh, there's this this old farm that's been turned into like a music venue and there's a bunch of hippies that live there. And I'm like, this place sounds awesome. And then, um, honestly, I don't think I can remember my first couple times there just cause I probably got so incredibly wasted. Yeah. But, uh, uh, first time I ever smoked weed was that camp. David. <laughs> um, I, I'll never forget. I went to a camp David party and it was like, they would have these, Especially way back when they would have these like, you know, parties and there'd be, you know, you have a band playing and I was there like drink until all all hours in the morning. But it would also be, you know, summertime. It'd be so warm. You could just go pass out in a field and it wasn't that big oh, of a yeah. thing. And um, <laughs> I remember I went there and I, I drank and I ended up like passing out in the grass somewhere. And I wake up the next morning and I'm like hitchhiking back to my my dad's house and this guy in a pickup truck stops and he picks me up and and it was uh steve kastner the legendary uh you know web oh, designer wow. you know activist uh journalist guy and he goes oh i'm on my way to go see uh senator russ feingold at this event you want to come with and and i go yeah sure and like that was one of my first yeah, like political career yeah my long long running uh political career which uh i have actually not filmed anything outside of like doing interviews via skype i haven't filmed anything pretty much in a year it's it's been uh either skype interviews or or videos of my dog yeah well those are fairly important i think That was beautiful, man. <laughs> Unfortunately, the battery died halfway through. All right. But we are recording again. Yeah, you always have the camera, man. Uh, you, you did all kinds of stupid shit for the sake of the camera back in the day. I, I, I wish will... I had some of those old videos, man. I will I will definitely uh, interject some of those videos into it. Uh, one of them, of course, was the time that I recorded you playing uh, Radiohead Karma Police, which yeah. I just thought was that like. A, that, you put that on YouTube, didn't you? I think that yeah. one, that's shareable. You, you can Google that.
Up in Wisconsin State Where my parents happened to me There's a little town called Sturgeon Bay Where I've been wasting my life away Well, I work in the nursing home Where I don't bring much money home The people there die alone But nobody weeps so I moan Up in Wisconsin, up in Wisconsin Down in Sturgeon Bay Up in Wisconsin, up in Wisconsin I'm wasting my life away I got some friends around here We hang out and drink lots of beer Till it all becomes perfectly clear There ain't nothing happening here Some say I'm cynical They say that the glass is half full I don't believe that bull It's driving me out of my skull Up in Wisconsin, up in Wisconsin Down in Sturgeon Bay Up in Wisconsin, up in Wisconsin I'm drinking my life away Wisconsin girls are mean They think that the queen of the sea They drive their Zamboni machines Right over all of your dreams Winters get so cold Feels like I'm a hundred years old If it ain't nailed down it's sold Cause you can't turn ice into gold Up in Wisconsin Wisconsin, down in Sturgeon Bay Up in Wisconsin, up in Wisconsin I'm wasting my life away Everybody now Up in Wisconsin, up in Wisconsin Down in Sturgeon Bay Up in Wisconsin, up in Wisconsin I'm wasting my life away Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, and just so many times. I mean, and then you, you probably remember. Like first, I was running around with the big VHS, like over the shoulder camcorder, yep. and then it was the smaller camcorders, and then actually, right here. And now I've gotten down to like the uh, the Canon was this this bad boy was camera. Still in great condition. I've I've used that for many years now, and and now I've got it to the point where, you know, I've I got the um, the rotating uh, whatever you call it stick for the cell phone. So if I really want to go out, I can just take my cell phone and keep a perfect steady. A gimbal. Right? The uh, gimbal. Yes, the gimbal, which is a brother. Brother's got all kinds of camera gear lately, man. He's got all kinds of fancy stuff. Beaver, he's, he's working with Piranha North Studios now. He's uh, he's talking about maybe trying to make a movie this summer, which would be cool. And you've you've mostly done acoustic, but you've played some electric guitar as well, don't you? Yeah, I've had a band out here since forever, kind of. Uh, Matthew Fisher and the Fishes. And we're actually working on a record now, finally, after several years of playing together. Uh, we just started recording a couple, about a month or so ago. And yeah, finally going to put out the rock and roll record. But uh, yeah, man, I I've, I've still try to keep writing songs and stuff slowly. I got about three records worth of backlog songs so hopefully i can start putting them out i put out a couple music videos uh earlier this year um so yeah i'm just trying to do that it's you know a passion project all kinds of stuff i do that doesn't make me any money and takes a lot of time and energy 
how old were you when you started playing guitar? Oh, uh, I mean, when I started seriously doing it, I guess I was probably about 12 or 11 or something, but I used to just, I, I started playing guitar because I wanted to sing songs, mainly, uh, mainly funny songs about trying to make people laugh. <laughs> Uh, you probably have some on video over the years. I do. I do. I mean, there's so much, so much stuff. I mean, I actually was look, looking at it not too long ago. Uh, in, in the 2004, I was um, running around doing the uh, the billionaires for Bush stuff at the um, satire group at uh, yeah. the fall festival in Sister Bay. And you had a little, uh, you were playing underneath a little, like, tent or whatever. I mean, it was, like, raining most of the day and everything. And Yeah, that might have been, might have been the year that I quit, I, I quit my job to, to go play that show. <laughs> like, I, I was supposed to go back to work after that, and I never went back. <laughs> That's the great thing about those summer jobs in Door County. I mean, there's a like a dime a dozen with these hotel and restaurant jobs there. And it's like you could just basically go out and party and then the next day be like, oh, I got to work. I'm too hungover and quit and probably find another <laughs> job three hours later. <laughs> oh, and God I, bless Eric Scheller. He, he hired me back the next year. <laughs> I oh worked at that building for like eight or ten years almost for me i think going Over to Sister, going to sister bay the funniest thing for me will always be the the empty space where uh beanie's mexican restaurant was yeah. that's no longer there and uh My like first I, job that was your first job first job ever yeah watching this and yeah I, I i feel the like Schwainer. it was schwain who this kid who rocked the amazing like 1981 all black Toyota Supra a thing uh, <laughs> the fact that passion. the fact that we didn't all get killed in that thing like the fact that you know a deer didn't pop out in the middle of the road one yeah. night just, like there were times I remember I really him remember riding in it I remember him working on it all the time but like it didn't run most of the time Oh, I remember him driving it, and his dad was in the back seat, drunk, going, drive it faster, drive it faster. <laughs> oh, and I just remember seeing the odometer go 110, 120, and it was, it, the <laughs> odometer stopped, but I felt like we were still accelerating. And I'm just thinking, like, if a deer pops out on us right now, we are all dead. There's no surviving any sort of interaction with a deer right now. But... um you know, he worked at Beanie's. <laughs> he worked at Beanie's. You worked at Beanie's. I worked at Beanie's. We all worked at Beanie's, which was actually a like, it I'll didn't be, even yeah. didn't even dawn on me like what a racist, terrible name for a Mexican restaurant that was until yeah, years I later. <laughs> I didn't think about that until right now. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it was just like never. It was a terrible name, and the the owner was a raging alcoholic. And uh, I think we all kind of did the same thing where we would get a soda, pour a whole bunch of soda in, and then like top it off with a whole bunch of that cheap box wine and get drunk as possible. Uh, off yeah, they didn't have a liquor license, so that they had margaritas with like wine or whatever. Oh, yeah, they had lots of beer and um, lots of wine, but no actual... It's It's so funny. I mean... Just you and me Until the end We would plant a garden in the yard Maybe save some cash Buy a brand new car But my 
And I think one thing I really always loved about Dora County was you, the fact you would have so many people, a lot, a lot like Wisconsin Dells, you've got so many people from Europe and Asia and South America that come to work there. And so, like, growing up there in Dora County, you know, you're in a little small area, but yet you get to meet people from all over the world. Yeah, definitely, man. That was a huge part of my life, for sure. Just the multiculturalism of, of all the employee housing and stuff and meet all kinds of crazy people from Poland and Bulgaria and stuff. And my wife, I met my wife. Bigly Wiggly. Yep. So many people come to work for the for the Piggly Wiggly and just all the establishments of uh Door County. What was something you really loved about Door County? Uh, too 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 many things to name. Uh, oh, you know, it's just my home, really. I, I love, I, I love summertime when all kinds of people from everywhere else come and think it's their home, you know. Yeah. And you, you just get to, you get to be crazy. I remember like squirting super soakers out the window at people just for fun and stuff. <laughs> just like all the tourists <laughs> everywhere, just fucking with them, you know. I remember driving. Sister Bay and like we would yell out the window, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. You dropped your wallet. You dropped your wallet. <laughs> exactly. I was gonna say that was the best part. I remember doing that with uh with our friend James a lot. Like you know, sir, you dropped your wallet, and I I just will never forget the time I'm driving with James and this older guy. He like turns around, and he slaps his back pocket. He realizes he has his wallet. He realizes that we've messed with his psyche, and he just turns around. And he goes, oh oh fuck you, fuck you. And it and it was such a great social experiment because it was like it kind of like. For these people, they're on vacation, and their wallet is everything to them at that moment. And if they think for a second that it's not in their pocket, even that it's just on the ground, and they freak out about it. Or other times, I remember, uh, I'll drop his name, I was uh, driving around with Joey Rish, and he would do this thing of meowing at people. He would just We would drive, and he would just go, meow, meow, meow at people. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Or of course, there's the class. Go ahead. 
dri- driving for others. <laughs> you, you, in the passenger seat, you hold the wheel, and then the guy driving would stick his whole body out, <laughs> out the window. No hands. I can't say I did that. And this is actually uh, this is a me. terrible this is a terrible gruesome story, but I think one of the funniest stories I'll ever remember about Door County was there was like a mobster named uh I think it was like David Borealis or something was on the run and he like <laughs> he went up to Door County to oh, like David Dellis. David Dellis. Yeah. The, Chainsaw the guy, murderer. The guy goes up to Door County to like hide some bodies, and the, and the some for some reason the authorities know this guy might be up there, and they find him. But he had a blockbuster card, and he's like, "No, I'm somebody else." And they looked at the blockbuster yeah. card, and they're like, "Oh, okay, sir, move along. Nothing to see here. Go yeah. on." And then they apparently, find the guy. Apparently, that that happened at the Coyote event. Yeah. Yes. Before I worked. There, but... Yeah. And, and and then uh, they fire like, the guy. Oh, they fi- you're not him. <laughs> you have a blockbuster card. This is a valid form <laughs> of ID. And then they find the guy later on burying bodies out in the woods. And it's like, oh, I guess a blockbuster right. card wasn't sufficient. You like took some family hostage or something and lived in their basement for a while. That was scary, man. I remember when that was happening. Mark Raddatz, my stepdad, he he went out and like had a gun in his hand and shit. He was like trying to make sure this guy wasn't on the property. Yeah. Crazy. Oh my God. I, I mean, the fact you guys lived like way north, well, north of me. And there were times I would like, I would just, I don't know what the hell I was doing now looking back on it. I used to hitchhike all over Dora County because I was just yeah, like. That, I, I, was, I was sort of worried about you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, I, I mean. <laughs> I mean, coming from Racine and everything, I Dora County. I'm like, oh, nothing bad's gonna happen up in Dora County, and and uh, you know, I I I just I would I would walk, I would walk for like, you know, it's like, oh, my friends are up in the next town, and I'm I'm you know, 15 miles away, and I'll just I'll just walk for three, four, or five miles, yeah. and I'll someone will give me a ride, and it worked out. I mean, it was all you could do. I mean, geez, this was like. Nobody had a cell phone or nothing back then. It was crazy. It's like, I mean, I want to go see my friends. I'll walk 20 miles. <laughs> and you know, I mean, kids nowadays have it so nice with all the, uh, you know, states that have legalized pot and so forth. I mean, back in my day, yeah. back in my right. day, you used to have to walk. And, you know, it was an adventure. And, uh, you know, you had to find somebody and, you know, hope you didn't get ripped yeah. off. And, uh, hide in the woods. Hide in the woods, yeah. You have to, we had to go on nature hikes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been saying that a lot lately to my friends. Like, geez, you know, fourteen-year-old me would be so mad at myself for not just like smoking all the pot I can get now. You know, like, <laughs> crazy. It, it's like it, becoming legal in Thailand, even. They uh, they are proposing it here in Wisconsin, but sadly, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I was actually thinking yeah. about it the other day because you know, the um I was I was talking about it with uh Mate Keen, the person who's you know helping put together the uh, radio project, and I I was talking to him about how my high school was really defined, and I was thinking about it because this year will be the 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 twenty year anniversary of nine eleven. And it's like, wow, I was a freshman when 9-11 happened. And then we went to Afghanistan. And then my junior year, we went to Iraq. And then my senior year was the bush Kerry election. And it's like, what a crazy, like, what a crazy time the early 2000s were, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, it's funny to say that and think about that. But look at what's fucking happening now, man. We had Donald fucking Trump as the president, dude. Like, <laughs> whoa. We thought it was bad back then. Like, fuck this Bush guy, we gotta get rid of him. Like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm.
And for those of you just tuning in, you are listening to the Whiskey Report on Corsair Radio, sponsored by Discourse Coffee Shop, a liquid space in Sister Bay, Wisconsin. And on today's episode, we have been playing music by and an interview with Matthew Fisher, a Door County musician who now lives in Bangkok, Thailand, where he has started his own bar restaurant there. You can find Matthew Fisher's music on various social medias, YouTube, Bandcamp, so forth. Just Google Matthew Fisher. And before we get back to the interview, just a quick reminder to support Corsair Radio by sharing this link to your friends. Check out Corsair Radio on Facebook and other social medias. Once again, this is an interview and music by Matthew Fisher. Oh my God. I mean, I remember, you know, people, you know, I mean, I, I couldn't do much being only in high school, but, uh, you know, that, that feeling of like, oh my God, if George W. Bush gets reelected, I'm moving to Canada. I mean, there's a whole movie about yeah character uh saying that it was like that was a real thing so many people thought like oh bush gets reelected. i'm moving to canada imagine if you could go back to 2003 2004 and be like oh ho, 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 let me tell you buddy, uh, right, buddy. Right. this guy gets better, elected better get to canada right now <laughs> yeah and uh it's 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 so funny because i think about it, it's like if you go back to the year 2000 and you told somebody Someday Donald Trump will be president. They wouldn't be surprised. He'd be like, yeah, yeah, a rich guy, a billionaire gets elected president. That's a natural, that's just going to happen. That's the, but you know, the, the crap he said, it wasn't even till like the last five years that he really like let the bag out or whatever of like the crazy shit he really <laughs> thought. Like we knew he was a little nutty, but we had no idea of like how far. Uh, I think what's really happening, too, is that, like, everyone's getting sort of exposed, and and people are now getting exposed to the reality of, like, these aren't people, you know? These aren't people like you and me. This is, like, the whole fucking world is very, very dark and fucked up, you know? These guys are, they're not, like, regular people. They're, they're something... Like the the, the 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 picture of the human race at its worst and darkest is like these are very powerful people and look at how fucked up they are. You know. I was thinking about it today. I was thinking about it, and I don't know if this question has ever been raised, but I don't know if and this is might be silly, but I don't know if Donald Trump has ever driven a car. And you think about that. Like this is somebody who's probably been chauffeured his entire his entire life. I mean, I think the only time you've actually ever seen him behind a wheel was the time they brought that semi to the White House and he got in the semi and he like he looked ridiculous, you know? <laughs> oh, that's a fucking funny notion, but I think you're right. Yeah. It's, and you know, and weird. I believe him. I believe him that when he says that he you know, he had some brother who died of cirrhosis, so he never drank. He never smoked. He says he also never sent an email or drank a cup of coffee. And it's like, yeah, I mean, his vice was like, he's a sex addict and everything. And so he's got his vice and everything. But it's like, the man, like, he never drank. He never smoked. He just ate fast food and, you know, <laughs> well, was a I sex mean... addict. If you want to paint a picture of bad people, I, uh, you know, all the good people I know drink and smoke a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, just a few hours ago. I was, I was, uh, I was downtown uh, in the little town I'm in, and uh, I had my dogs with me. And this guy's got, and my dogs are little. And this guy's got his big, gigantic uh, Doberman pinchers. And, my, of course, my dogs are barking at this guy's Doberman pinchers. And this guy, tank top, you know, he's got the, like, uh, 
uh, I don't know what you call those. Uh, the, he's got these tattoos that are like um, basically the equivalent of the modern day barbed wire, some sort of you know tough guy tattoos. Yeah, like, yeah. He's probably uh, sixty tri something. Tribal. Yeah, something. Tribal I mean, you tattoo. know, some sort of not exactly tribal, not not even that cool. But uh, he had a <laughs> giant Q on him, and he had a, this shirt was like <laughs> "We are Q." And I turn to my wife, oh, and I'm God. like. I'm like, I kind of want to mess with them. I want to be like, hey, brother, the real election's <laughs> on June 5th. <laughs> We're meeting again. Or, you know, like, I can't believe anybody would be dumb enough to still believe in that Q shit. I mean, it's one thing if they believed in it, you know, three years ago or whatever. But, like, after, like, it's over, buddy. Like, he's not there anymore. He's not in well, office. There is no Q, you know. I don't even know if it's dumb enough is the, is the right way to explain that. Uh, uh, they just don't like you, you know. And whatever it is they can identify to be on the other side of people like you, and they don't. It doesn't fucking matter if they believe it or not, you know. They just believe fuck you. And you, you know, you're liberal, fucking whatever it is they want to call you, you know, like uh, they don't have to believe shit. It, it's it's just going back to what I was saying earlier about like leaving the country years ago. I mean, you've, I mean, you've 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 come back and visited and everything, but you've been living overseas for basically a decade now. Yeah, more than that, really. Like, oh wait. Pretty much. Wow. Yeah, it, you know, this, this country is just as fucked up as any other one. You know, <laughs> that's the way of the world. Powerful people are not usually very good. <laughs> Sadly, the truth. But you know, I like living here, and I get to run my business. I mean, I started this fucking place with no money at all. I couldn't even imagine doing this any city in the U.S. And I get to live in Bangkok, which is like one of the greatest fucking cities in the world as far as I'm concerned. Got everything you want. And it's, you know, there's there's a huge bunch of police corruption and stuff like that going on here, but in some sense, that's kind of liberating. Because well, we don't have any, we don't have any police corruption here in the United States anymore. Yeah, I mean, uh, the yeah, Obama, that's, that's Obama got rid of all of that. And, uh, Thanks, it's, Obama. Yeah, it's it's sunshine and rainbows all the time. Yeah, I'm surprised that unicorns aren't out on the street more often. Oh, actually, no. Uh, uh, Joe Biden has a uh, it's a, an eleven trillion dollar unicorn package. Um, <laughs> he said, "Well, it's going to cost eleven trillion right now for the first unicorn, and then the second unicorn. But the u u two unicorns are going to get it together, and they're going to make more. They're going to reproduce more unicorns." <laughs> It's the unicorn trickle down effect. So Wait, are those? I gotta ask. Behind you, are those screen prints behind you? And screens to make screen prints. Yeah. That's yeah. That's what I thought. I thought those are screens to make screen prints. Are you yeah. making making T-shirts or or posters? Well, uh, yeah, those are uh, some T-shirts that. Uh, Couple of the big, the ones you can see, uh, my roommate made those, but some of them are for my band t shirt and stuff. We just mess around with it. You know, this is kind of, this is like my, uh, if you, you can see that it's all messed up. This is like my studio kind of room. It used to be my roommate's room, and it's just full of junk. I have a shop house that's like four floors. Uh, and it's just full of junk, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we uh, before we uh, go, uh, where would someone go to find your music? Do you have a website? Is it on Bandcamp or Spotify? Or yeah, I'm I'm on Bandcamp and Spotify. Um, I actually tried to send you some MP3s, which I don't don't really know how to do. Uh, and then I, I ended up opening one of my CDs and I tried to rip it to my computer and I still couldn't figure it out. <laughs> but uh, 
But I am on Spotify and Bandcamp, and I've got a record label with my friends called Woo Records, W-O-O-O. Uh, so you can go find our music there at W-O-O-O-W-O-O-O.com. Uh, I, I actually have recently uh, started a new uh, MySpace page. Uh, you, you can find the Whiskey Report. You can still do that? You can do that. Yeah, I, everybody keeps like, what? You could do that? Yeah, no, here's the thing is, here's the funny thing. So I realized uh, I can, I, I can, I realized I was like, wait a minute, I can start an, a MySpace and I'll be like the only person on it in many ways. Like it's a digital wasteland where like, I'm sure if you're producing something like, it can become popular, but I also realized like nobody I know in the entire world has a MySpace account, so I don't know how it add anybody or get any oh, following. But we maybe all used I'll... to have one. <laughs> yeah, but like the thing is, everybody started their MySpace, and they did they forgot their password and they did it with an email that they haven't used in probably fifteen mm -hmm. years. So nobody has any ability. Like my my original one's still out there. I have no idea how to access it. I'm kind of amazed. Like wow, it's still exists, and like I'm, I can see. I'm not sure if you can. I, like there's some music that I've released on MySpace that like that's the only place it exists. And well, I don't I'm, know. If it's, I'm so it's I'm Google. I'm very uh, I'm very much for the idea. I think we need to like because I saw the movie Tenet where there's like the reverse time travel and everything. And yeah. I got me thinking like, you know what? Maybe we need to do that. Like we all need to start going backwards with our technology. Like, you know, instead of these smartphones, maybe we need to start going back to like blackberries or like uh, flip phones. And uh, too much. I, I have a uh, behind me. I have a, a whole stack of old camcorders like uh, yeah. VH, well, digital eight high eight vhsc and i actually have a pro i have a device that i can use so i'm going to start filming with those and then they'll be instantly digitized but they'll still have that old grainy like early 2000s i'm, I'm, look I'm all in for that man i got a whole shelf full of old cameras you know i've always liked to collect old cameras and shit i've, I've been a photographer sort of for many years now i'm I totally want into that man I want to go back to the VHS camcorder because I loved how it would sit over your shoulder and just it, it made you get that like actual like cameraman <laughs> look to it. Like you're, and, it yeah, you're, and you didn't need a tripod as much because your shoulder was stabilizing the thing, you know? And right. uh, I'm, I'm going to find somewhere out there, I'm going to find a fully functioning VHS. And the best part is uh, I won't even need to use any VHS tapes because I can output the yellow red white okay. auxiliary cables into my little digitizer box capture card or whatever yeah cool, man I'm down well i wrote you a song Thought it had pretty words But you didn't sing along It was one that you'd never heard I said you had pretty eyes And I was telling the truth That I thought you were nice I guess I didn't get through
usually no one's paying attention you know it's <laughs> funny as like i and many people had problems with the uh the the guy they called uh they called him k nuts the uh the principal there at the time and you know, he was a very mean and vindictive person and uh last year before the shutdown uh my brother got married and i go to his wedding and i'm i'm there with all these underclassmen uh who you know are my brother's grade and they're telling me about how before the principal left, or I should say, before the principal got fired, that guy went like way off the deep deep end, where he started like grabbing guys by the throat or like slamming guys up against, <laughs> like getting violent. And I was like, what? Like, I mean, he may have grabbed somebody once or twice when I was there, but it wasn't to the point where he was like physically grabbing guys by the neck. And it was like, so I, I think we, uh, one of these days I should do a. Uh, a documentary piece on the dark world of Gibraltar High School and uh yeah. expose man. Didn't, didn't you like try to fucking sue him or something? I I never did. Oh, but he actually uh funny thing was in two thousand three when I started filming anti war footage and started doing interviews with people about the war and so forth. Uh, I had used my own VHS camcorder and I had used the school's VHS camcorder that was borrowed to me. And somehow they found out about it. They actually found out about it after we uh, we had gotten egged and, and, and beat up one day protesting the war. People shot at us with a paintball gun and they threw eggs at us and they eventually physically attacked us. And the school found out about how we got attacked and... They also found out that we were using a school camcorder, and so they got so concerned about the footage, not what happened to us, 
but they got so concerned about the school's camcorder being used they they sat down my mom and my dad with this letter and the superintendent and they're like if your son ever uses any of the footage we will sue him and he will be expelled and also he is Ow. partially expelled and he's got to go to the charter school that's in the district somehow and uh, that's why I got kicked out of Gibraltar where I had to go finish out the rest of my uh, senior year in uh, or junior and senior year in um, in Sturgeon Bay at the charter school and uh, they had this whole thing like oh and also you have to hand over the footage that you shot and I was like oh okay and so I gave him a tape that like was just a bunch of stuff I was not planning on using and the funniest part and this is how my 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 video journalism kind of took off was I go to the charter school and they had this very nice well you know nice at the time this digital eight camcorder so I was jumping from VHS to digital eight and they had this digital eight camcorder and I say oh what's that and they're like oh that's the that's the that's the camcorder for students to use and I was like oh so I I can use that and they're like yeah yeah and I'm like yeah I do interviews and they're like oh you yeah you can go interview people and use that for school credit and and that's where it kind of all led from there. Yeah, this is uh this is a closet um that uh, <laughs> my wife uh didn't care too much about and I'm like, can I just put all my electronics? Uh, shop. Oh, but the funny thing is, I am actually building a, I am building my own little sound booth right now. I've taken uh three pallets and I've drilled them all together and i'm adding all this wood on if you basically think like of a think of a sauna i am building like basically like this the look of a sauna this big wooden box inside of my garage that i'm gonna have like a little desk inside of and all my equipment inside of and then my plan is like come winter time i'm gonna go out there and be able to record and um it's gonna be my little uh my little captain's deck all right man yeah, I'm trying, you know, like show you around the room a bit. I'm I'm trying to keep my shit together. I gotta find another contract for this building next year and I'm 
I'm pretty dug in, man. So I'm going to try a little harder to make my place more of a studio. I record stuff here all the time, you know. And I got, but I got like, I'm right by the main road, so the fucking noise from trucks driving by. My house like shakes if a big truck drives by the overpass. Well, you can hear about you hear about all these like stand up comics who are now doing, uh, you know, they're because of COVID, they're doing their shows outside. They'll be doing or they'll be doing shows like in a parking lot or something, yeah. and then it's like an airplane goes over <laughs> in the middle of their show. <laughs> Which I actually think the whole like doing stand up comedy outside is kind of a cool thing, you know, like it's skateboarding, man. Take your it's, art form to the street. Yeah, I used to um it's funny, I used to do all sorts of uh artwork with sidewalk chalk in in Madison and I, I would remember that. I would make these large like murals out of I mean, they're basically huge political cartoons in the street. And there was one time I got charged with graffiti and another time a cop messed with me and gave me obstructing traffic, which was the funniest thing ever because like I was in the street and I, I got out of the way of him. And then he said, you know, he wasn't even a a city cop. He was a university cop and I was an idiot and kind of gave him some lip. And I said, yeah, well, maybe you should worry about your own jurisdiction of the university. And then he's like, oh, that's the way you want to be about it. And then he parks, <laughs> he parks his SUV in the middle of State Street, and all the buses are going to like have it slow down because they have to go on his, his SUV. You're and, obstructing traffic. Yeah, it's like he was the one obstructing traffic, and then he uh, gave me a ticket for obstructing traffic, and there were like a half a dozen other times where you know cops messed with me about using sidewalk chalk and most of the time they would like check back and they'd realize oh there's a city ordinance that says you can use the sidewalk chalk but i mean i got messed with so many times for using sidewalk chalk and then last year after the riots and whatnot like kids went up and down state street writing writing on sides of buildings fuck one two we want literally writing we want you know dead cops spray painting knocking out windows all this sh- and like nobody got charged for graffiti when that so it's like and i know another guy who who literally you know I smile. strange strange times i know another guy who who also does sidewalk chalk before COVID happened he got charged with graffiti for using sidewalk chalk near the capitol and he this guy is real like simple like as far as like he's just doing peace signs and like you know something something about a politician and uh, he's been charged actually twice for sidewalk chalk. And it's like, okay, sidewalk chalk, they'll criminally charge you. Uh, spray paint all over hey, a building. No big deal. No big deal. Well, yeah. What town are you in now, man? Are you in Madison now? I am. Uh, I, I am. In a, I, I, uh, I don't say on the. On the yeah, internet. Really? Really? Only because I, I I have had I literally have been stalked by Antifa types uh, from time to time, but I'm I'm I'll say that I am just uh, I'll say that I'm about twenty minutes south of Madison. All right, okay. Yeah. Uh, just and 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 believe it or not, I mean the 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 far crazies of the the activist world in Madison they they show up at people's houses like they show up at the school board president's house they show up at the mayor's house like it's it's a weird time like you know you can see the extremes on both political sides right now um yeah i'm uh glad i'm not there most of the time yeah 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 it's uh i mean one thing i've been talking with these interviews lately i've been talking to a lot of people in uh new zealand and it's just like it's amazing to see like when COVID started, they took it seriously and they shut down and they like closed down the borders and they took, they did what they needed to do and they didn't have a massive COVID outbreak like any other country did. Like they had, you know, where, when countries are having thousands of cases, they had like, you know, two. And I think they've still in the yeah. whole entirety of this whole thing, I think they've had like maybe less than a hundred deaths and, you know, less than a thousand cases. It's probably even less than that. And um, they shut down to the point where, you know, by April, May, they were still having music events with thousands of people. 
and uh, so I got to talk. A pretty, pretty good success story as far as all of. Are you still there? Okay, yeah. it was it was cutting out for a second, but yeah, no, I mean, and and so I started talking to people in New Zealand about, you know, how well they they able to handle all this stuff and how they got through it, and um, just realizing that there's this massive amount of different types of music in New Zealand, and you know, it's it, you you've got like heavy metal music and you've got rap and you've got a, a huge electronic scene there and and everything and i've been uh been interviewing a, uh, one guy i've interviewed a couple times named uh manu francois and he's like he's from the caribbean and he he started off playing like more like thrasher metal and he does hip-hop and rap and like uh, i have so many different types uh, maybe i want to say more reggae as well i mean just all sorts of genres of music this guy covers i'll have to look into that
Alright, and for those of you just tuning in, you are listening to The Whiskey Report. I am your host, Miles Kristen. This is, of course, on Corsair Radio, sponsored by Discourse Coffee Shop, a liquid space in Sister Bay, Wisconsin. And on today's episode of The Whiskey Report, we have been talking with and playing music by Matthew Fisher. He is a Door County musician who now lives in Bangkok, Thailand, where he actually owns his own bar restaurant called Fatty's. This was a nickname of him from years ago. His name's Matthew, but they call him Fatty because, well, frankly, because he used to roll the uh, the fatty bo baddies, as some people would say, it's a, it's a silly nickname that's stuck with him forever. And so he's got this place in Bangkok, Thailand, called Fatties. It's uh, like I said, a bar restaurant. And up until this last year, it was also where he would be performing live music and have other musicians come and play. And uh, you know, hopefully. With the vaccines and everything, the conditions improve, and we can go back to uh, living a more normal life where we can go see music. And if you want to check out Matthew Fisher's work, just Google Matthew Fisher. That's Matthew, last name Fisher, F I S C H E R, F I S C H E R. Matt Fisher is somebody that I, you know, I met him 20 years ago and been friends with him ever since and, uh, you know, really hung out with him a lot uh, back in, in high school and uh, this couple of years after when I, when I lived up there in uh, Door County and, uh, you know, thanks to Thanks to Skype, I'm able to have a conversation with him as he is all the way over in in Bangkok, Thailand. So uh, before I get back to more music and interviews with Matt Fisher, uh, just a quick reminder, you know, to to support Corsair Radio by, you know, liking it on the social media like Facebook and so forth and uh, sharing the link to Corsair Radio to your friends. It's it's free we're not asking for any donations there's no cost for Corsair radio you know 24 hour streaming music uh, just a wide variety of different stuff so do what you can to support Corsair radio and in a second I'll go back to uh, another song by Matt Fisher and the rest of the interview thank you for listening I keep wishing I would burn the house down Been on the bottom But I'm not saying That you let me down Just miss 
miss you Then couch riding, I don't know to clean the shit off my bed. I keep getting bad thoughts in my head Why are you dead? Why are you dead? Why are you What was it like there and when this all started? What was the lockdown there like? Um, pretty bad, like last year. Um, there, there was like a ban of alcohol sale for like a month or so, which, you know, I, I think it's government playing games with people a lot, you know? Uh, but we thought we were kind of out of the woods, I guess, um, for a while. And then now they just recently locked us down again. We're not allowed to have people in the restaurant. Uh, when we when we have, in the past couple months, we're not allowed to sell alcohol, which, you know, it's kind of a crazy rule. Alcohol doesn't spread COVID, does it? <laughs> no, I. You're the only person I've now talked to. People in England and New Zealand and people from all over the United States, and I have not heard of anybody having alcohol restricted. Uh, I mean, in fact, when the when the original shutdown happened here in Wisconsin, the the immediate thing they said was in the original lockdown was, uh, you know, we're going to close. We want everything to close uh, except for grocery stores gas stations and liquor stores was kind of like that was right. you know that liquor was definitely i mean i feel i feel like even that liquor was like the biggest question like okay okay i've got food what what about liquor and they're like no no Next. We, we want you to stay home and drink okay just right yeah which you can't tell it was sean tonight that they can't drink that would be an uproar man <laughs> You know, I mean, I see the faults in both sides of, like, the Republicans and Democrats that they both did wrong. And, uh, you know, it, it it's uh, it's so strange, you know, like, the, yeah, we shouldn't be kept up in our houses 
because like that makes us unhealthy and then we're less likely to be able to fight the virus at the same time like you know i get also get like yeah don't go to a massive party don't go traveling to mexico right now and and don't go to don't go to florida right now and i mean the yeah. college the college kids were probably the worst about all of this in the end crazy man i mean we don't really know what to do that's the thing like and and a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about what to do and you know this is america so people get to have different opinions and do what they want to do and stuff and there's nothing wrong with that i guess but uh no one fucking knows what to do they still don't know what to do Do they do they have uh, vaccines there? Yeah, well, apparently they're starting to roll some out. Uh, it's all weird and convoluted, man. It's I don't really know what's going on. Um, they said in the beginning of the vaccines coming out, they're like, yeah, everyone's gonna get one for free, and now they're starting to open up some private clinics and shit that you can go pay for a vaccine. You know, and now everyone's getting tested now, which wasn't really happening in Thailand the whole time, kind of. And they're, like, trying to keep everything under wraps, like, 
yeah, see, Thailand's doing really well. We don't have cases and stuff like that. And now everyone's getting tested. I've had several friends that tested positive for COVID with no symptoms just because they're starting to give out all these tests now, you know. And I don't I don't know what's going on with this shit. And is it some sort of a ploy to convince people that they need to buy the vaccines now? Because somebody bought a big shipment or somebody bought a big shipment of tests whatever you know it's it's so crazy i mean right now in the united states it's, it's um, i want to say something like um it seems like you know at least 30 percent of the nation has had and over 30 percent of the nation has gotten at least one vaccine shot or you know there was the you know there are the vaccines we require two and there's the johnson and johnson that required one and it seems like in the United States, you only have those three versions of a vaccine, uh, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, Pfizer. Um, but uh, you hear about the situation in Canada, and it's just like, wait, what? They're like, Canada's way behind the United States. And I, it just, it's, it's strange to me like that the United States did so poorly in all of this for the first year. And now in the last few months, it's like, oh, wait, but the vaccine got like put out incredibly fast uh, as far as like once it was available, it, it actually with, you know, within this last three months it's something about apparently when Trump left and this other guy took over, things somehow improved. I, I, I It's a crazy oh. thing. Is that, is, I don't know, man. I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist or whatever. I, I try not to think too deeply about this stuff because it's the best me. But, uh, who fucking knows, man. Yeah, that, I agree. I would agree <laughs> there. I would agree there.
Um, okay. Something, uh, something's weird. Something. There's there's so much weird stuff, and there's so many rabbit holes in all of this. Um, okay. Uh, before we close out the hour, uh, again, how can people find your music, Maddie? Uh, yeah, you can just find me on on Spotify or Bandcamp. I think I make more money if you download the record off Bandcamp, which is still none, but uh, yeah, I'm out there. Google me, Matthew Fisher. I, 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 hope, I hope you can find the music and listen to it. I think I'm on iTunes. So. But yeah, I'm just here trying to do my thing. If anyone hears this and wants to support me as an artist, um, hit me up. You know, I accept various forms of currency. Okay, thank you everybody for listening. <laughs> yeah, kita malam ini ada di Ferry bersama teman-teman, orang-orang aneh semua di sini. Semuanya nggak ada mengerti apa yang dilakukan di sini. Yang minum, silakan minum. Somebody else the same old me living in this hell. And I need to go out now, but I don't wanna go up or down. No, I don't wanna go up or down somehow. And I need to prove to you that I don't.
trying to get up no one's ever listening to me It's blood and tears, no sweat Cause I gave up when we first met I gave up when we first met on love Time 
When everything's fine now you're gone And I'm singing this song So far away Where I can't understand what they say But I didn't belong anyway They all think I'm gay Well I promised I remember Up 
on questioning I've got it figured out There's you and me The rest are things I don't care much about We'll smile when we feel happy And sometimes laugh out loud we'll lie down on our backs and drink When rain falls in our mouth Okay, everybody, that will wrap up today's episode of The Whiskey Report. We were listening to music by Matthew Fisher. You can check out his work just by looking up Matthew, last name F-I-S-C-H-E-R, Matthew Fisher. Check out his work, and thank you for listening.